Pony Tales. We are here for Polly Wentz Farrier Service. It is our educational how to keep your farrier clinic today. And we are in the middle of our second little tidbit on it. So we're just kind of gonna sneak up front and let you guys watch what's going on. When I do when I do my river run, when I do like Duran, Mondovi, Alma, Cochran, Fountain City, it's all sand. I don't ever have to really touch the soil. I'll clean the bars out, trim them up, clean them back. But as far as touching the soil, there's nothing really usually to take. And some of them horses, like I don't like horses going more than eight weeks, because you can change the structure so fast. And then when you pull them back and rechange the angle, they get sore, and that's hard. But them horses, being they wear down pretty nice, there's times you can let them horses go 10, 12 weeks. It's just because they're on the sand. Now you get horses like where I live, where it's all dirt. Sometimes they look like their speeds at six weeks because it's clay, black dirt. They just don't wear off. Even in the summer when it's dry, I mean they're still leaving prints. They just don't wear off. Um, we I do a have a decent little um, crowd here today. Gives me anxiety looking at their horses, but they, if anyone uh, has questions, I can always say, ask him for you, and, and then he'll answer them on and the I'll live. Just, so feel free to areas. ask your questions. Okay, you're doing your thing, but they're also the one that thinks twelve percent sweet feed is the way to go and no. the cheapest hay around. But sometimes you're just farther ahead to bite your tongue. And being fair, you're going to learn that the hard way. This is our how to keep your farrier cl happy clinic. So and he is basically going over good behavior, bad behavior, what we're looking for in horses to keep your farrier happy. He's going over issues in horses' feet that are common. If anyone has questions, feel free to ask, and I can ask him for you and have him answer live. Or there's something else going on. Um, otherwise, if you're going to put a full set on, let's say, a lot of rocky riding, if you're going out west hunting, if you're going down south, like Missouri, Arkansas is notorious for not rocks, rocks. Yeah, my um, swords are horse I've seen some pictures on some farrier forum pages on Facebook where they'll be like, oh, your typical day riding in Arkansas, and they'll pick the foot up, and there's just a big, massive stone lodged in there. I mean, Oh. That's a good way to kill your horse. <laughs> um, so backs are mostly for terrain. Yeah. And fronts are for traction. Traction, um, just keep your horse comfy. Yeah. Um, Currently he's going over the different types of shoes. Don't cheap out on your horse. You're not going to do him any favors by if your fair says, hey, you know, if your farrier looks at and he says, do you want pads? And you say, is there a reason? And he's either going to say, he or she is going to say, well, your horse is thinner sold. Or, or, you know, give the farrier the most knowledge you know. Say, hey, I'm going to be going trail riding in Missouri. There's lots of rocks. He's going to say, hey, great, let's grab shoes. We're going to grab a heavier gauge nail because you're going to be on a lot of this and this and rocks and it's a good way to pop shoes in this because it's not just flat trail riding. We're not going down the highway. We're going on some rough off balance stuff. So you're going to tweak a shoe this way, this way, every which way. So you're going to use a heavier gauge nail, grab some pads, and even if you got an older horse or thinner sole, we'll grab some impression material. We don't do it to just break in the money. Right. We want your horse to be comfortable and you happy too, because we hate getting callbacks. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I know I do. There's times uh, my wife's not with us. She's homesick, but she could tell you we get phone calls. I had a phone call Saturday night at like quarter to 11 at night. My horse blew a shoe. I'm like, what were you doing? Well, I was running her in the arena. I'm like, did you break your arena? Because there's lots of stones in there. Well, no. Like, your horse is due Wednesday. Can you wait till Wednesday? Well, you're going to have to. If you want me to come Saturday at midnight, you better get the check. <laughs> so there's just, there's the courtesy thing of that too. I mean, if you know your farrier's coming in a few days, just 
let it go. Yeah. Unless your horse is like dead lame, like something's wrong, right. then yeah, then give them a call or just shoot them a text, you know. I have a couple questions from our YouTube followers. Yeah. Um, first, yeah, we are live on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, so Wendy is wondering how hard it is to trim a draft horse's feet. Well, it depends on the nutrition um, and how new you are at it. I know my first draft horse I trimmed, I didn't think I ever wanted to trim a draft horse again because I couldn't even squeeze through the hook. Uh, now it's easy. Um, depends on the age and of course how well do they stand and two when you get them in the stock how easy do they give you your foot because <laughs> uh, you'll throw your back off trying to trim them off. That's right that's when the ropes come out. Rachel's wondering how many horses do you work on in a week? Uh, average is I would say 100 is average. A steep week's 115. Lynn wonders why she sees so many cases cases of thrush um, and a lot more horse videos on here. Um, she's wondering what causes thrush. So thrush is a wet environment. Uh, and thrush is one that is, you're always going to be fighting with in this part of the Midwest regardless because, like, you know, you can see all four seasons in one day. And it also depends on what kind of dirt you got. If you got a lot of clay... Um, I don't know what kind of dirt you got a lot of clay. Here. Okay, so same as where I'm at. I got a lot of clay. Clay does not filter water, so it's always going to be muddy. Um, I always try to bed my horses on the highest point possible. Um, I'll use either straw or corn stalks um, in the winter time, just to add a little extra fluff. In the summertime, it's a lot of wood shavings, um, just to kind of get a layer so they have somewhere dry to go. All right, I got one more. Um, how often do road shoes need to be changed typically? Well, it's just like a truck. How many miles are you putting on? Um, so, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're an Amish guy and you're running down the road 20 miles a day, one way, coming back, I mean, you're probably going to need them done in four weeks. Um, and if you're just going to town a couple times a week, then you probably get by with eight weeks. And then you have lots of love Polly comments as well, just just so that you know. Polly is currently <laughs> Polly is currently doing a um, farrier clinic for um, anyone that was in the area or wanted okay. to travel to us. So this is Mary. This is Cindy's personal English dressage horse. She's probably my second favorite horse here. <laughs> probably Daphne. Oh, I agree. I second that. <laughs> Of like kind of your ideal how they will stand yep so this is kind of just as a farrier what in a perfect world what we would deal with every day because we would never have an excuse to be home late we never have an excuse to be late for the next stop um like I, her, really, I, don't, I don't even really need to hang on to her i just kind of cross tie her and keep I mean, an eye on her we've been yapping here for a while it's been great the whole time as a farrier i do use treats Our instructor told us in school, he said, a horse is like working with a 12 to 1,500 pound toddler. They're big, they can be dumb, they can be belligerent, they can step the wrong way one way, and there's your knee, there's your hip. Um, I always make the joke, my feet are always cold because they've been crushed so many times, I can't feel my feet anymore. Um, when a horse steps on my feet in the face and you see it, I just look at it. She's like, my foot back for you. No. No, no, no. Do not wear steel toes. I'm not entirely. 
She, Mary, this is Mary. She is Cindy's personal horse. And she is a Hertron Frisian Morgan cross, I believe. And a beautiful dressage horse. <laughs> That's Polly's little boy right there. We like to see in a horse is um, <clears throat> horses that are behaved and stay on a schedule as best as possible. I mean, there's still horses I go out and trim twice a year, but they're also 30, 35 years old. They don't need a trim every eight weeks. Um, I was, me and my wife sat down one night and counted how many horses. Mary smiling for treats. Clientele books. Um, seems like a lot, but it's not a lie. We have 926 horses that we do. Um, that's not, you know, not every eight weeks. About 57 of them are still twice a year or as needed just because they're old. But the rest, we do that many on eight weeks. So that comes out to be about 100 a week. Um, so there's no room for sick days. There's no room for much because you will fall behind really fast. Um, I know last, this last summer we went to Wyoming for a week and to try to cram 300 head in two weeks. Um, I think I slept the first three days on vacation. My wife is <laughs> <laughs> um, So it's just... I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't actually enjoy it. Um, I know I wouldn't want to be any taller because it's hard on the body. Um, it's a job you got to love, and I do. I love the horses. Um, my brother can tell you stories about our horses when we were growing up, the shit we used to do with them, how we're still alive, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking back when you're a kid, you're not experienced, and you're just... He definitely stuff. is Killed the best player. Playing string, playing cowboys and Indians. I don't know how we're still alive, but we are. It was fun. <laughs> um, and we... then growing up and learning stuff, it's like, wow. They probably didn't kill us because they knew we were that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple questions. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple more questions from YouTube. Yeah. One of them is an apprentice barefoot farrier. Yep. Um, she asked, how do you tell where the bars end and how deep down do I cut them back? I was told my horse's bars go all the way to end of the frog. Yep, so if, if bars are let go long enough, they will grow all the way around the frog. Do you want to show on her? Like, yeah, the bar is absolutely. Go on here. Okay. Yeah. So we clean this out here. It's really dry, so forgive me. So I always say, on like on this horse here, it's not a very good one, but if your bars are running along here and coming all the way down and wrapping around, and you got kind of that, that lump where the bar grows all the way down and around, just take your knife, and just go along and just clean it out. Just keep it level with the sole or even angle it a little bit so you're getting down in that frog and you're not letting any thrush harbor. Um, keeping a... Keeping a nice cleaned up frog is a lot of it. Uh, a nice healthy frog, I would say, is probably half of your horse's foot health. Um, well, like thrush. Look at tail when we first started with him. He was lame because the thrush was so bad, but it was also, I mean, six inches of mud then too. It didn't matter where you went, it was in mud. And you can't control mother nature. But we can work. I have a couple more questions. Um, someone is wondering what's on your wish list as far as equipment goes for work. 
Your fan club wants to buy you things. I'm going to shoot for the stars. No, I guess, uh, I don't know. Just What's go, something you go through a lot? Nippers. They're getting more and more expensive to replace and rebuild. I think you said the one pair cost you like $800? For a draft horse nippers, they're about 800 bucks. Oh, wow. Um, I go, like, so this is just a GE 14-inch racetrack nippers. I like them because they're a little smaller. They're not your $65 ones you see at Fleet Farm. I don't think I could make one from Fleet Farm last me a day. Um, this is a GE 14-inch racetrack. GE and, and uh, Mine Car have probably the best on the line. Um, MFC is a good one. They're out of England. I really do like the English, Austrian, and Swedish barrier supplies. Um, these run about, it depends where you go, just shy of 400 bucks. Um, and I'll burn through one, have to have one rebuilt probably every eight weeks. Um, and they cost about as much to rebuild as they are new. Um, rasps, I always, um, I go through about a rasp a day, roughly. Um, you can re sharpen them with a buffer wheel, go against the grain. Um, this is a Belota Classic, it's got a little more bite. Um, so if you're new starting out, probably not the best one to go because you can take a little extra layer off too soon. Um, or the Belota Top Line's a nice one. The top level's a nice one. Uh, this is a Heller Rass, made by Musthead. They're out of Austria. I like them too. They're a little wider, so if you want to cover a little more ground, if you've got a bigger foot like a Therabred, you like Mary. Um, you're not sitting there all day trying to bounce. Um, so I do like these. These, so if you go for about one a day, I would say I got to trim six horses a day to break these on cocks, roughly. Um, I usually go through about a tank of fuel a day in the truck, sometimes more. So I would just say about 100, 120 bucks a day in fuel and about a rasp a day. So about Unfortunately, I can't turn the phone, otherwise YouTube won't let me keep going live, so that's why it's upright. I apologize. I'm still running with an old clincher that was given to me in school. This thing is old. And this is probably clinched, no lie, probably a million nails. Probably a million nails. Wow. Um, it's getting burnt out. I would like a new clincher one day. But new clincher, summer, rasps, uh, nippers. Nail nippers. Uh, chaps. Chaps. Yeah. yeah. Barrier chaps. <laughs> They run, I don't know, it depends on what you get. These ones, I think, are CMs. Yeah, I think I paid like 350 bucks, but they got thicker leather. Uh, and the whole point of the thicker leather is, is when you got a horse that's being a stinker and you got all the nails sticking out, if you get a cheap pair, the insides of my legs look like hamburger meat from all the nails that have caught over the years. Um, these, when they get on it, they don't go through. That I do like. But when the horse drags and pulls, it bent. Oh. And I will say three hundred dollars is cheaper than two thousand in stitches in any yard. Yeah, or it turns it. <laughs> I have a couple more questions. Um, somebody asked how far you travel and so like from your house, how far around you in a radius would you go? So I say an hour forty five in any direction of my house, so just say about 100 miles, as long as I can get, you know, enough horses on that route for that day in that direction, and I've kind of got that worked out um, for the most part. And then someone else is wondering, what would be the best horse supplement to use to help with the, to help with the health of the hoof? Good God. Um, start with good feed, start with something simple. Go back to the basics, start with good hay, good mineral. Um, also, too, a lot of it is genetics, terrain. You can't always, you know, fix that. But if you are going to a supplement, use Farrier's formula or Farrier's formula of double strength, but contact your Farrier first and let him decide on which one you should start with. I think the only thing left of her was we were just going to talk about, like, we 
we know she doesn't need to be done, she just got done a couple weeks ago. Um, how you determine, because the horse that you see most of the time here, you've never worked on before. Right, it's so. How do you determine <laughs> if they need to be done? So like, like Cindy said, a lot of the horses come in, sometimes they only trim them once. Sometimes I only see them once and they're boom. Thank you, door. Tina. Yes, please um, hit the thumbs up, everybody. So really like, to, subscribe, share. It's hard as an owner. Like, I'll get, I'll like, I'll text someone and say, "Hey, this video is of weeks, the best farrier ever." Weeks, remember. Um, should we set something up? And they're like, "Oh, they're looking pretty good yet." And I'll be like, "All right." And I'll be like, "Okay, send me a picture of the feet." And I'll get a picture like that. I'm like, "What am I looking at?" And I'm like, "That's the feet." Just pick the foot up. Clean it up. <laughs> Pick the foot up. I want to see what the foot looks like. So, then they'll pick the foot up, they clean it out. And if you've got from the toe back to the sole where you're going to trim an inch, she's due. We've got to take some off. If you've got bars growing in and around, the heel's starting to chip off, or that frog needs to be cleaned up, it's time. Um, and like I always tell people, it's don't. Fun. How, what you're looking at. So like this one, she was just done. But like if you've got an excessive growth of the hoof ball coming out, and then you can see the sole and the growth and Barbara all the Barbara Polly is currently um, teaching an educational course on how to keep your farrier happy, talking about behaviors of horses along with, um, yes and no. along with um, just kind of educating people on horse yeah. Hoof health and all well, of that kind of stuff. That have, you know, like little ponies that have foundered on too much grass, too much sugar. Um, I still do a mini donkey that foundered so bad. We are also getting snow and tonight, and we will also be getting dumped on Monday uh, and that Sunday his night. Feet are so soft that he's on like deep bedding all day. Uh, and the reason they won't put him down is because he's going by a little bit. So I would probably do the same. Uh, mechanical founder is one, like I said, that's usually one where you know, that's where you run into your corrective shoeing and try to save it if possible. Sorry, After that, it's kind of it's just a job. Clear oil and boots, that's probably your most minor one as far as um, what was that after that we watching. had a ranger that had heat so bad that. He was years ago. That was right. Yeah, he was going to spray gems, but that's always a risk for founder. That's pretty minor, but it's still founder because it's how does the body process the drugs. Um, I say a horse has five hearts, four foot, four feet, and a heart. If they're hurt, their hearts are hurt. That's just kind of how it is. Um, diet, you come to that, grass. Do your farrier a favor. If the grass is less than three inches, don't turn your horse out. Just don't. Because you will not believe the amount of sugars in three inches of grass versus five inches of grass. It's insane. To another thing, too, and this has a big effect on it, what time of day did you cut your hay? If you have grass hay and if you cut it in the morning with heavy dew, you're going to have a high sugar content. But if you cut it at noon, one, two in the afternoon, and it's dry, it's going to be about perfect. Now, I know we can't control Mother Nature. There's times that we put up hay that was pretty bad. You almost got to use it as bedding for the cows, but what do you do? I know we always cut ours. Sorry, yeah, guys, I'm yeah. a little shaky. My hand and got cold for a second. Is, you know, you're really heavy ones. Overweight, it's just like us being a diabetic if we can't process it through the body. Do not put glue on shoes. We had a horse here today, we put the, took the glue off shoes on. He's that black paint mare standing there in stall three with a white blaze. Uh, they put the wrong size glue ons on. Um, and she's got she's an abscess the size of a 50 cent piece in her front foot. Um, yeah, Roberta's going to hand the shoe around. Um, oh, it's here. I mean, I really like the barrier. I mean, yeah. and she did really good. Um, she said, I will only put glue on. And I'm like, I said I called Stillwater. And they said, absolutely not. I, I mean, I like, think every, every shoe has its place. I mean, purpose. it seems logical to glue them on instead of putting nails in their feet, but... I, um... 
for the what you can do with you know how many different access shoes we have to with aluminum or if you want to do a natural wedge or a bar shoe anything heart bar egg bar the whole i mean there's so many different styles of bar shoes you can do a half bar if you got a collapsed heel or a fractured heel and you got to modify a shoe so that nothing's touching the outer you know the inner heel the outer heel um you can modify we're very that, thankful that, that he's putting this clinic on for all of us putting the glue on on and then Believe it or not, those things that cost, so I charge $450 to put a set of glue-ons on. One, they cost so much it cost, and two, the glue at each, is a tube of glue is about 65 bucks. And you're gonna go through two, sometimes three, depends on how well does your horse stand, how, I mean, how big is the foot, how much glue are you gonna need? I mean, because you gotta coat the whole body. You gotta coat the sides, you gotta make sure it stays. It's just, it's not financial. <laughs> just smart to do that way and plus how hard that plastic is uh we seen the horse today when she come out racing it ray about broke her face the horse slipped on some a wet spot i mean to me they're just not safe okay i mean i just said no no that's I fine mean, it, it seemed to, to me like oh you're not putting nails in their feet would be so much better in theory yeah. but if you know what you're doing you're fine <laughs> yeah no i mean i just i ended up not having her because of um so there was a question a little while back asking where you went to school and how long you've been doing this oklahoma state farrier school in 2012 um it was kind of a time in my life where i didn't know what i wanted to do i know i didn't want to stay home and milk cows so i went and did that I always knew I wanted to do something with horses. I never thought it'd be a barrier. Um, I always thought it'd be like maybe a vet or, I mean, at the time I was probably 100 pounds soaking wet. I always thought it'd be fun to be a jockey. Mm -hmm. But uh, that didn't work out. Uh, Chinese takeout treated me too well. <laughs> so the jockeying days didn't work. Um, so I went and did that. Um, so yeah, since 2012, but I was, learning with other people how to trim since like 08, um, during school and, you know, after high school, you know, after hours of high school and middle school, just learning. Um, but I've been around horses my whole life. And does a lot of like it experience based as you go? Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, you're only gonna teach you so much in school, you're only gonna do so much, and you're gonna work on, most of the time, well-behaved horses, because they don't want to kill you off or scare you out. Um, they will make you work on some hard-headed horses to test you, um, but it's, that's where you weed a lot of people out, too, because this is an industry where you see a lot of players come in, and then in two, three years, where are they? You don't hear from them, you don't see them. It's, it's a humbling job. Um, it's hard on the body. Um, you're going to break stuff. You're going to smash stuff. It's just, I mean, you're working with animals that are... 10, 15 times your weight. It's, just, it's gonna happen. Um, what's your favorite type of shoe? I guess I don't have a favorite type of shoe. I guess whatever whatever that horse needs. I do have a favorite kind of horse, and that's why it stands good. <laughs> and then what kind of, of chaps do you use, and how long do they typically last you? Uh, I like, I mean, I like the C&Ms. I can usually burn a pair out in about four months. Sounds good. That's all I got right now. If you're interested in becoming a farrier, how do you start? So you and I had this conversation before. Um, if you if you want to be a farrier, I would say, you know, most people are going to say go to school and then be an apprentice. But you're young. You know what you're doing with horses. I would say, you know, ride with me for a summer or when you're available. Um, even if it's a day or two a week. When He's I'm currently talking area, to Miss Lexi. Get a feel for it to see if it's she right is 16 and still in high school, but she is considering like possibly becoming a farrier. Um, the closer to the ground you can be, the better. A lot of six foot, you know, five foot eight, five foot nine, six foot farriers, they, their backs are junk after 10 years of doing it. But that's just because it's a lot more of this where we're just... We're already here. <laughs> We're already there. Um, that's uh, one thing I guess I can say. I'm, you know, I'm happy with being short about is uh, my back is not too bad. It's bad enough, but it could be worse. 
and I usually don't bump my head on stuff when I walk through the door. Um, somebody asked, what is your most gratifying experience as far as healing a horse or shoeing a horse? Probably Daphne's story, honestly. Um, that was a horse that when I, show her. when I first came here, so here's Daphne. I mean, you can see the coffin bone is sunk real bad. Um, it was a horse that I had started when I started here two Novembers ago, so a year She's the reason pretty much you started here. Daphne. Yep. So Daphne was a horse that you guys were considering, um, you know, the worst. It was just kind of to that point, and they let me have a shot at her. Um, we had probably six to seven rounds of just trimming toe, trimming it to make it look like a foot and grow like a foot. She had no wall, baby. Yeah, she had no wall to grow, you know, to tack a shoe on to because it was just brittle and gone. And then after we got the x-rays to see where the foot was, an updated version, and then we knew what we could do. Um, she still has her off days or she's not 100% sound, but I mean, there's days we've put shoes on and you guys have said she's a shit and a pain to catch, so we know she's feeling good. <laughs> um, uh, well, I would say it was probably a feed diet related founder because when I first seen her, she was... I mean, she was... All of the horses that we picked up. From yeah, there. from that same place was... It was a sad deal. She came in with a baby on her hip and a baby in her belly. Yeah, so baby on her hip and a baby in her belly. Poor thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Daphne doesn't really like too many people, but she's kind of taking a liking to me. You got a picture of me sitting on her one day over in the other alley, and <laughs> she didn't pay no mind. I still think she'd look pretty good in my pasture. <laughs> <laughs> for any of our for any of our um longtime followers that know about Daphne's story, Polly's pretty much brought her back from the ashes. So, so. Then I think it's kind of your call. I think we're kinda of gonna end it with one of these two ladies. Well, let's pull in the end just because she's pretty we're gonna do a stock demonstration. We'll do a stock demonstration with a draft horse that weighs as much as the car that you drove here. Um one had um one no if you do like a stock safety. Absolutely. Always watch where you put your fingers. <laughs> Always watch where you put your fingers. Um, I have a question. Um, what is your fee for regular trims and regular front shoes? Uh, 60 for a trim and 120 for front shoes. That's including the trim as well. Gotcha. And that would be all four trim. Yep, all four feet would be 60 just barefoot and 120 for all four feet trimmed front shoes as well. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we're getting this. We're getting the stock already. We're going to do a stock demonstration. Um, we are using Miss Envy, the biggest horse on the property currently. Someone asked, which one, uh, which one do you prefer to trim more, horses or donkeys? Horses. <laughs> that was an easy horses. one for him. <laughs> okay. So, stocks look intimidating to a non-experienced horse person, but they are the safest way to do a horse this size and for the farrier. Um, so, you got your butt chains. It's kind of common sense. That's just so the horse can't back out. Um, two, two levers here that just lock in, catches the chain. You've got, we'll explain them as we go. Two, always make sure the rubber piece is adjusted evenly on both sides. That way, if they decide to lean one way or another, this one needs the rubber piece. they're not pinching on chains. Um, most stocks don't have two chains. This one's just kind of got a double secure. Um, I actually know the guy that they bought that stock from and 
him and I have trimmed some pretty wild stuff in this thing. Um, mm -hmm. That's why there's two chains. Um, Can you make something that would hold your foot up so that can get through you? Um, well, what we do is you pick the foot up, you set it here, and these uh, eye bolts here is where you run a dog collar through and strap uh -huh. the foot in. Um, so yes, basically the, the price of a good pair of tennis shoes. Let's keep your horse from rear and going over if you get a young wild one. Um, Envy's not going to do that. She's about as maniacal as a box full of kittens. <laughs> um, it's true. So you just run it through, I say, for safety purposes. Never wrap the chain in your hand. It's common sense, but you'd be surprised. Um, belly chains is if your horse goes down and you can't get her up. That's just more... You want to keep them as restrained as possible, but you don't want them so tight if they flex, you can't undo them. So we leave a little wiggle room, um, especially with the belly chain, because we've had a lot of them get a little lazy. Yeah, we have something early, they will change. Sometimes they'll use the chain, they'll use the chain to just completely relax. Um, she's about the easiest to do, but she's done this a million times. If you've seen our YouTube video on Envy, Nate ended up adopting her, and it's a very sweet story, so I highly recommend to check it out. So it's a really bad, like an infection, like a... Basically, the best way to describe it is when you get looking at it, it almost looks like a bunch of a bunch of maggots. Because it's got a bunch of chemical looking things eats and the soul. eats away at the sole, eats away at the whole foot. Most horses, it's a death sentence. Um, How do they get that? You got to treat it. Cervically, the bridle. Yeah. Certain How do they get it? They don't. They, they do don't not. Know. It's very rare. Yeah. They it's oh, it's uh, <laughs> study after study. It's very prominent in drafts. Um, but they originally thought wet, muddy conditions, dirty conditions. Unfortunately, drafts get a really bad rap in the health line of things. Um, like the big guy I had, he had shivers. You see a lot of draft horses in string hole, and that's where they'll be walking. They'll be they'll pick their back leg up real high. Um, there's a lot of neuro neurological issues with draft horses just because they're so big, and you've got that much more animal to go through than a quarter horse or a pain, hear him, whatever. Um, another reason why, too, that drafts are so short-lived, you don't really see many over 20, is because they're big. And the reason why you see ponies live to 30, 40, um, two reasons. They got a really short neurological system, everything's compact, tight right there, and they're too ordinary to die. <laughs> I do have a couple questions for you, just real quick. Yeah. Um, do you trim any other types of animals besides horses and donkeys? Um, you trimmed Stone's toes. He's a goat. I've trimmed a lot of goats. Um, is that your little boy? Yeah, this is a little guy. Oh. Future figure, here, hopefully. Um, <laughs> and a huge ladies' man. <laughs> he helps with the tools right now. <laughs> um, trimmed a lot of goats. Trimmed a lot of cows. I trimmed my own cows, my own bulls. Um, trimmed zebras. <laughs> um, I've trimmed, I've trimmed a camel, um, and I've trimmed a giraffe. This was all at the zoo. Um, we've trimmed some of the Asian wild horses at the Minnesota Zoo. Um, some of their camels. We got to trim a pronghorn and a buffalo. Wow. Um, most of the men though were sedated, <laughs> but sedated, sedated. Um, other than that, nothing too crazy. Have you been injured doing the big guys, like drafts? Oh, yeah. What's your worst injury you've gotten? Ruptured kidney. Mm. Holy cow. Um, Is the zebra's hooves like horses? Like a donkey. Oh. Yep, okay. like a donkey. Pretty much straight up and down. Um, Do they act like a donkey? Too? Worse. <laughs> they got to be sedated, like knocked out. They're, they're not even mean. They're just dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a friend who hauls exotic wildlife for the safari park down to the Wisconsin Dells. And he said two of the scariest animals he's ever loaded was a water buffalo and a zebra. Ooh. He said a zebra will come at you. See, and they won't stop. 
He said he's seen a zebra kick through a, like a center block wall. He said he's seen it kick through. Yes, that is Polly's son. <laughs> yeah, they're they're cool. Yeah, but they're they're di they're dangerous. <laughs> Um, they're wondering how many hands high Envy is? Uh, 18, 1, 18, 2. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, 18, 2, 18, 3. 18, 2, 18, 3, yeah. There's 18 something, I knew that. She's <laughs> probably... She's probably 2,100 pounds would be my guess. Two big, big bars. Uh-huh. <laughs> And she's a Pertron? Yeah. Yes, Pertron. Yep. So, yeah. Whenever you're ready. So, yeah, I mean. Do you want to show them how you, like, tie up the hoof or yeah. the foot and stuff like that? Yeah, what are some of the, like, safety precautions? So, in theory, your drive horse should be able to pick its feet up just like your average saddle horse. That's not always the case, even with Envy. One, because she's kind of just spoiled, <laughs> per se. Um, so what I do is I always have like a soft cotton lead rope. That way it's, it's soft, it flexes, it's not going to hurt them. If they start pulling and thrashing, it's safe, 100% safe. Drafts are too big. The only way you're going to hurt them is if you actually shoot them. They're tough. Um, with her, she will fight you, you'll be stubborn, and you'll throw your hip out, you're gonna throw your back out. Me and Ray do this every week. Um, best thing to do is try to get him to lean over. You gotta fight the foot. You gotta be fast. And you gotta watch your fingers. You get a finger stuck in between there, it's not gonna feel good. Um, so like this in theory is too high, and you drop it down a little bit. And that's when you gotta really be careful and inch because if they pull or run their foot forward, slam their foot forward, what's gonna happen? They're gonna smash your finger. We're doing our best. The mic isn't connected so and your, isn't working. Set in place, that's when you would get your dog collar. You run it through your eye bolt, wrap it around. You get your foot all cleaned out and you start trimming. Um, you can clean her foot out just to kind of give you an idea of how big her feet really are. A dinner um, plate. <laughs> and you can feel the weight between a standard shoe and a draft shoe. <laughs> is in a normal horse uh, shoe and then a draft horse shoe. As you can see, the little one literally fits inside the big one. <laughs> with wiggle room. Yeah, with wiggle room. Did anyone else want to check these out? The shoe sizes? I'll set them here in case you do. Now you have a point. You, the, that's got a clip in the front. For yep. You. So what would the clip? So the point with a toe clip is that you get a draft that starts clawing. Um, Nine out of ten drafts I see nowadays are a lot of stall horses. What do stall horses do? They get bored. And they do this okay. all day long. So the whole point of the toe clip is helping them keep the shoe on. Um, and another one too I've noticed when it brings the foot back, that also helps with the draft and keeping a heel up. Um, because you're making that foot retract on purpose versus panning up. Now, if they're left on too long and you don't reset them, I've seen it to where the foot will grow almost around that toe clip. That gets to be ugly. I think we've seen that once, didn't we? Yeah. I don't remember who, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, you look at the size of this foot compared to my head. <laughs> it's about the same. <laughs> I don't know, I think the foot's bigger. Yes, and we will stay um, at Ponytail's. Nate, Cindy's husband, has adopted her. How is typically the biggest hook on a horse? Shire? Yeah, Shire Pertron. Um, biggest shoe I've ever put on was on a Shire, and it was a size 12. 
So almost double of that one I just handed. That's a dinner plate, right? Hey, absolutely. Um, that's a platter. Yeah, and it's it's uh, very overwhelming sitting there feeling like you got a six by six between your legs and you're nailing on a dinner plate. It's it's a cool feeling, but it's it's overwhelming because it can go wrong really fast. So yeah, it's this is a draft horse that's probably one of the easiest ones to work on here. Um, we had one in earlier today that we thought was going to turn the stock into toothpicks. Um, and when they get thrashing around in here and it starts flexing, it looks scary, but we truly only ever had one horse get out of it. Um, I think Cindy remembers that. Tazio. One. Tazio? The great uh, escapee. Yeah. The great escapee. Yeah. That was a scary day. He came out the front. He got his front legs over the. He had to tear down this wall. Polly had to beat this off because this was tweaked. Yeah, that was, it was rough. rough to get him out, like. Is that the one that's in the video in the beginning? Yeah. Yes. Where you see, okay. Yes. That one. He like came out the front. Yeah. That is never... And you'll see a lot of patching on the stock. That was him. This heavy, this heavy chunk of angle steel is a big part of it. <laughs> um, yeah, was, that whole thing was snapped in half was, almost. I, I don't know how he didn't turn it into toothpicks. But it... Uh, We're just following him. Yeah, all he had was uh, he rubbed the hair off on his stifle and a little bit on his chest. And the, there was no blood. I mean, he just ripped hair off. How he managed to... I mean, he was almost as big as empty. Yeah. And he fit through there like a dog going through a doggy door. <laughs> and it was noisy, and it was loud, and even Nate came up and said, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but all you can do is those moment, in those moments uh, is just let it happen. Yep, when you get something that big doing that much damage, you just sit back. Let hell go, you know, just let everything go to hell, and when you're done, you pick up the pieces and you move on. Because yeah. um, if yeah. you get in the middle of it, you're going to die. Yeah. Um, even with a mini, you, you try to stop with them little things. Uh, there's a lot of power compacted in one little spot. I always say trying to wrangle a miniature donkey or a miniature horse is like trying to grab a pig. <laughs> work, they're just going to sit there and wiggle their way out. Um, yeah, but when you got something this big, just let them do their thing, and when they're calmed down, then figure it out. Because there's a guy that lives by us. Um, I won't say his name, um, but they show Belgians. Um, super nice family, but their horses were always a little edgy. And I always say, Thank you, Tina. When I walk into a new place to trim, I can tell everything I need to know about the owner by looking at the horse and reading the horse's movement. If you've got 10 horses and eight of the 10 are spazzes, Odds are you're probably a little high strung yourself. Um, if I walk in all eight of your horses, I can walk in the barn and like this, and your horses just look at me. You're probably pretty easy going, or your horses are desensitized. Either way, that's fine. <laughs> the owner is fast, so the horses are just like, what up? <laughs> We're well too. We just put out what you want in here. Well, it's hard to say because there's just so many new ones coming in, but as far as your personal horses, they're just like, they don't care. Whatever. They're easy. That's how they, that's how they should be. But you walk into some places, you know, the horse will tell the farrier, the vet, everything we need to know about the owner. And, and the biggest thing we hear is, well, my horse has never done that. Or, you know, <laughs> They've never done that before. <laughs> There's a time and place for that. Uh, a lot of times the horse will test the farrier the first couple of times. He's got to get back on camera. <laughs> the horse will test the farrier the first couple of times um, to see what they can get away with. Um, like I said, it's like dropping your toddler off with Ray, and I might say he's a good kid, and he might flip, his, flip her house upside down. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's what a horse is going to do. They're going to test it. But I think, too, uh, every farrier gets worked up. Every vet gets worked up. Everybody has an off day. Um, I always say I would go into every job as calm as possible and level-headed. But if your horse is belligerent and you don't want to correct it, 
either I'm going to correct it in a humanely fashion, or I'm going to ask you to get a vet, or I'll come back another time. So what are some ways you can correct your um, A good one, I always say, well, one, just work with them. Make them, you know, make them stand. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt your horse. If your horse has a bad time <clears throat> standing, if you got a trailer, a tie line, a hitching post, take them out in the afternoon, make them stand tied here for six hours, four hours, eight hours. As long as uh, they're fine, they, you know, if they can't hurt themselves, if they can't hurt themselves, let them stand tied. Let them paw a hole all the way to China. They ain't gonna kill themselves. It's good for them. Teaches them patience. Uh, just like me, I'm rewarding bad behavior, passing a child off back and forth. <laughs> so that makes me a bad toddler. Over. <laughs> but um, Rachel, you know, there have been several it, horses it, it, that Polly won't do. Feet like a farrier would, so the horse doesn't um, get a confused. Uh, he won't do a, a horse that puts him into danger. He will tell the owners that they need to um, work with said horse if it's getting out of control, and then he'll come back and uh, trim them a different day. He went over it earlier before we went on live. Grab the front again right away and hold it up. Make him hold it. Um, you don't have to beat them. Like I said, you don't have to beat your horse. But hold them accountable. Like you said, don't ever feed treats for bad behavior. Um, I don't even like, I, I, there's a lot of places I go. Their ultimate excuse is to grab the feed pail and hold it in their face when they're trying. So. And guilty, we've done that. Oh, we have. But sometimes it's the, the safest way to do it to get it done. And sometimes these horses here cannot wait to be good for their feet. No, and to get their hooves trimmed. Sometimes you just gotta do it. You can probably <laughs> So, as far as picking, you know, as far as being a uh, a responsible horse owner for your farrier. The, really, the only thing that we ask is pretty much bare minimum. Work with your horse. If it's got some quirks and it kicks out, you know, take a stick and tap on his feet and his legs. You know, act, you know I wouldn't say aggravate him, but desensitize him. Make him realize that it's, you know, it's not hurting. Now, if it's something when you pick up a foot and it gets to a certain point and the stifle's locking and it hurts and they're kicking off the head, that's different. If your horse is just kicking the kick, correct that. Um, you know, it's okay when your horse goes to kick out. It's okay to go up and smack him on the butt or smack him in the belly and say, no. No. You're not going to hurt. If anything, you're going to hurt your hand more than the mm -hmm. um, They're thick hided. They got a lot of fat. You're not going to hurt. But you are going to get their attention. And when a horse has a bad, you know, if your horse acts up, there's a three second rule. You got three seconds to react before they realize after that they don't know what they did wrong. You got three seconds. Um. um. Darlene just asked, but if the owner doesn't correct the habit, does, do you just tell them to find another farrier or do you work through bad habits? Uh, depends on what kind of habit it is. If the horse is belligerently kicking out or keeps running the over, I will say you're going to have to work with your horse and we'll have to come back at a later date. Um, if it's too bad and the, horse and the owner is, I always say, a politely closed minded, I will um, tell them to find a new farrier. And I won't refer them to anybody because I don't want to have a bad rap on bad horses. Right. But it's right. not your farrier's job to train your horses. Yes, it's not your farrier's job to train your horse how to stand. That's your job to do as a horse owner or send it to train. Yeah. So if you don't want to train your horse to be good for their feet, you probably at some point will not have a farrier anywhere. Right. No, duct tape does not work. I tried that myth 12 years ago, 13 years ago. It don't work. What about the licks? Uh, the licks, no. 
No, you're just distracting them. And I've tried, I've had that happen once where they but put I a feel lick like in the front licks of them, and all of a sudden they realize their back foot's up and they look back and freak out. Your stand goes flying, your rasp goes flying. When no, I feel like the licks, the licks taste good, so isn't that almost a treat in a way? A reward in a way? Yeah, don't reward bad behavior. <laughs> So yeah, I guess does anybody how, here have any questions? How do you feel about correcting a horse in its chest? What did you say? say a horse is running you down or doing naughty behavior. How do you feel about correcting them in its chest? Well, if I got a horse that's like pushing into me and won't stop, I always try to grab the lead rope and back them up. You got to assert your dominance. They're going to walk all over you. Like I said, you don't need to jerk on their face. You don't need to rip teeth out of their mouth. You don't need to blister their nose band from, you know, from a halter, but get on their face and make them back up. Um, a rope halter is good, especially Ray knows this. Horses that are misbehaved, young horses, you got the pressure point. That's your best bet. All right, guys. Does anyone else on here have any questions before we end the lives? All right, guys. Yeah, Polly, want to say bye to your fans? Hey, guys, thank you. <laughs> You've got a truckload of rasps and new nippers and a GoFundMe coming your way, apparently. So, um, you're going to have to lower my rates. I'm going to buy tools for a while. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Wait.